One fine autumn, Nova Scotian day, Kit the robot embarked on an ambitious journey. From south to north, he had to know, how does each Nova Scotia region differ in terms of local issues, and how do they uniquely reach out to the needs of their people? With a plastic Lego heart full of love and sensors geared for adventure, Kit set off rolling from the most tropical depths of Nova Scotia to the frozen Great North. This is his story, Nova Scotia. This is your story. I'm Darlene Kay. Hi, my name's Diane Hall. I'm Donna McDonald. I'm Annette McKenzie. I'm Rosalie Lewis. Yes. First, Kit strolled into Shelburne Yarmouth region for its high times and high tides. The biggest issue that we have in our region is unemployment due to um, just the lack of infrastructure and closing infrastructure. So the CAP program is actually uh, offering training and things like that to uh, offer people employable skills. Next, on to Annapolis Digby, the shining red apple of Nova Scotia. I think in terms of HR, having a consistency instead of hiring people for three month blocks and then having to hire new people and hire new people and constantly having to redo and retrain and find it takes away from uh, consistency of quality programs that we can't offer. Then, Kit anchored down in the ports of Lunenburg, Queens. The main issue we're tackling is probably um, the rural remoteness of our region and the fact that internet access isn't available everywhere. So we provide points for everyone to come and actually get access to the information they need as well as provide it in an affordable way when the actual access is rolled out throughout the uh, country. And I would say the people that we serve in most, uh, I think specifically of our uh, branch in Bridgewater, is uh, people with a low social economic, uh, that, that class. Like, uh, they don't have a computer at home, they don't have internet at home, and they come in absolutely every day to do their uh, Facebook or uh, email or, you know, touch with their friends, whatever, but uh, looking for uh, love. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, those are the people that we serve mostly in that branch. And then some of our other places would be uh, tourists would probably be our biggest people coming in and out of our buildings, but definitely help people with the lower uh, economic Kit then wandered amongst the fertile lands of King's Hants West. When you come through my region, the first site you'll meet is Computer Literacy on the Move, who really does a lot of work with seniors, as well as youth, okay, and they have some fabulous programs. And then there's the Windsor Regional Library Cap site, who also, when computer literacy isn't open, they go to Windsor Library, and they're back and forth, back and forth. Then he found himself amongst the high rises of Halifax. I think one of the big hurdles is we are the largest regional municipality in Canada. Um, so there's actually a three hour drive between the two extremities. Uh, other hurdles are volunteer burnout, um, challenges regarding to financing, and just keeping up with technology. Then it was off to Pictou and Ignition, a rich Scottish culture. In Pictou County, um, it's aging, an aging population, but it's also um, a middle-aged population um, between, not even middle-aged, 35 to 45, 50, who uh, have lost their jobs recently as our industry changes and who now have to become new workers in the digital age when they've been working in factories and manufacturing. Then Kit crossed into Cape Breton County, a maze of twists and trails. I've been around for a long time and I've seen lots of solutions from just the basic problem being need for access to now. I think what we're looking at now is how you can maximize the use of broadband in our communities. How do we make the businesses make the best use of it? And how do we just have our communities? Inverness was next. Kit arrived guided by their beckoning lighthouses. We deal with a lot of issues, uh, some of which um, you have addressed earlier. Uh, some bit with uh, traffic at the cap site. Uh, we're currently investigating 
um, demographics of the area, um, general traffic, uh, the study of people getting more online as time goes on, as technology gets more available, it, it becomes a bit of, a, of an issue with the usage or lack of. Um, so basically we're, we're having a bit of an issue with that. Uh, the main struggle I would say is uh, getting the communities to recognize the potentials that are in their cap sites in their communities and if we can work towards that I believe the services are going to be great in our communities. I feel that it's such an exciting time we're living right now with interims of CAP and, and the internet web 2.0, community mapping, GIS, Twitter, Facebook, it's just so much out there, so much potential for, for you, for seniors and, and everybody, it's just... Finally Kit arrived in Victoria where Cap Love was in full swing, and he felt more at home than ever, telling all, you've, you've made, made a difference. difference. I think the challenges that we face at our uh, Cap site is probably volunteerism, a lack of, and we also face challenges with project development. Um, we rely on our youth for our summer, uh, Capsite to keep our capsites open in the summertime, but in the off season, we're always struggling to get uh, volunteer members to come in. There's never enough funding uh, to pay because, of course, there is no core funding. So, we're always trying to think of innovative ways to come up with um, projects that will interest people to come into our capsites and also interest youth to work in our capsites. Thank you.